I'm going to be putting on a very confusing cross-sectional print. Now, this is a print that we often see as machinists. And uh, this particular print demonstrates a, a spider assembly. And here is the spider assembly right in here. This, this whole view that has these dashed lines in it represents that spider. In, in this area, right in here, would be where your drive shiv is mounted. And in this area would be where your gear is mounted. Now, what's unique about it is, is this is an old style. This is probably turn of the century style, where we have what we call a marine bearing or a marine shaft. And it shows the location of the shaft in the spider right in this section here. And I'm, I've, I've picked this out just to show you that in this area, you'll see small undercuts right in the shaft, OK? And those undercuts in the shaft are what hold that whole assembly laterally. Laterally would be the movement back and forth on, on a shaft. Now, the way they did it years ago was to take that shaft, manufacture that shaft and spider, and press it as one assembly. And pr there's probably some sort of indication on this print somewhere that there should be probably anywhere from 30 to 40 tons of pressure when they press these two uh, shaft and spider together in the, right, in the right position. Now, what that successfully does is make it one unit, and it also will give you the opportunity to run as one complete precision unit and hold, in effect, the gear setting and maintain the loading of the machine. Now, on, on this, we call this a live shaft because it, the shaft is rotating with the spider. And the, the rotational area of the shaft is being supported by a Babbitt bearing. There would be a Babbitt bearing. Of course, this drawing doesn't show it, but there would be a shaft extension on this side as well. And on this side, would be the, the shaft ex extension shows all of these undercuts, or what we call marine bearing. Now, after pouring Babbitt, the Babbitt would conform to that shape. And it would physically hold that whole assembly in place. Now, in its time, it was the greatest thing that they ever developed because it allowed us to do all kinds of different work. By today's standards, it's relatively, it's relatively um, inefficient. It takes a tremendous amount of, of power to turn that, that, that uh, um, shaft in a babbitted bearing. There's a lot of area of resistance. So by today's standards, we use the ball bearings and thrust bearings and roller bearings and what have you so that there's less resistance, there's more efficiency. Uh, but there are many, many, many of these machines operating in different sizes uh, that are still doing their work and still doing their job so long as they're getting the right lubrication and, and, uh, and, and being relatively maintained uh, well. But that is an example of a marine bearing, OK? That's one style. That was an Otis style. This is a generic print that we put together for another style bearing. Again, we have our spider assembly all in here with a shaft pressed into it. This, again, is a live shaft. And this shaft is actually rotating on um, a babbitted shell. This, this whole unit right here represents a shell or a housing. And inside this portion right in here is babbitt. Now, unlike a marine bearing, this particular bearing would operate against the shoulder of a shaft to laterally hold you in position. Different manufacturers had different ways of doing it. But this would be very similar so that you have an idea of the fact that it doesn't necessarily have to have a marine bearing. It could be a sh straight shaft bearing. And on the very corners or on the very end of the shaft would hold that, that assembly laterally so that you're, you're, you're holding the gear in place or positioning the gear. What this dashed line right here represents is a chain. You'll see it here, and you'll see it here. You know, very typically, you might even see this on, on uh, gearless machines, same type of arrangement as well, where they'll have a babbitted bearing with chain-driven lubrication. There's a reservoir down, on, uh, down below, right in this area, that would have oil. And as the, uh, the live shaft turns, it would take the chain and pull and turn the chain with it and bring oil up 
and lubricate these bearings right in here, these babbitted bearings. So you might want to um, recognize the fact that as these bearings start to wear, you certainly will affect the performance of the gear, and it would contribute to lost motion. That is an area that, 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 that could be watched and could also be corrected um, if, if caught early enough. Also, those chains are very, very important to the, to, to the, to the life of that um, uh, bearing and, and shaft and whole machine. So it's very, very important that those chains are in good operating condition and also the fact that it, that it is carrying oil and there's no sludge or anything like that inside a gearbox. Um, some of the, some of the uh, problems associated with this is that after a while, in time, there are, t there are uh, situations where there's a, a tremendous amount of suspended load right in this area where the shiv is. And as things start wearing and you get a little slop in these machines, the main shiv shaft assembly starts to break loose. And once again, this is a pressed shaft in this assembly. The bigger the machine, the more tonnage you need in order to press these things and keep them in place. When that starts to break away or it loses its fit, okay, you'll, you can, you'll start seeing some rouge, what we call rouge, coming around right around the shaft where the shaft meets the spider. Uh, very often if there's grease or oil in that area, you might see a rusty looking grease or oil. Um, you might also experience a noise or a creaking noise um, that uh, as a car travels and so sometimes when a car is up on the top floor, coming up to the top floor, there's a lot of pressure on it. You might hear that noise as well. And one of the extreme cases is that that whole spider assembly may break loose and start shifting on you. Okay. That certainly is a big contributing factor to lost motion because it's allowing this gear to go in a different position and knock it out of, out of setting. Um, I have had experiences where you might find that this area is loose and this area is tight. And that's kind of, a, uh, kind of an unusual situation. It does happen, but it will, uh, it will not allow this to shift but it will make a lot of noise, and will, you, you will hear a lot of rumbling sometimes, and very hard to detect. But if you look for that rouge, it might be a, uh, a good indicator. Um, all of these different areas can contribute to lost motion, and that's something where you should be aware of it. As soon as, as, soon as that assembly may shift, or there's a, a, a signal or a sign that it shifted, it's certainly going to affect the gear. This, this is, the, is what's known as a, an older style lateral thrust. Okay, now this shows that it's a number three or four machine on a notice. They made them number fives and number sevens as well. Um, let me explain a little bit what, what this really is showing you. This is showing you, you an end view. On the gear side, there's a housing. This represents the housing off the gear side of the machine. This represents the main shaft of the machine. This right here represents a babbitted bearing sleeve. The sleeve is removable out of the machine. If you notice, it's, they show a dowel pin down at the bottom here, a cast iron shell that it's, that it's mounted on. Now, the shaft is protruded out, and there is a, a bearing that's used to hold the lateral setting of this machine. One of, one of the um, biggest problems with that is that the gear case oil, or the, the bearing oil, or lubricant does not feed into that bearing. Um, one of the major problems when they designed this, I think later on they corrected that design, but I'm sure there are hundreds of these things out there that, that, that maintenance people don't realize that they're supposed to be putting some lubrication in there. Over time, if this bearing doesn't see any lubrication, it starts wearing, and very slowly, this whole assembly starts, starts shifting back and forth. Uh, we've seen it where the threads have wiped out the whole end of the shaft broken in half. Uh, amazingly enough, these machines still operate with this whole assembly shifting back and forth. Uh, but quite honestly, it takes its toll on the equipment. And we often will get these, these old style bearings in and retrofit them and change them over. This should be right in this portion over here, which this diagram doesn't show. There should be an area with a pipe plug that should be opened up and someone be shooting some oil in there, okay? Um, very often, people don't realize it. Um, but this is, this is an, an older style, 1920, 1930 vintage Otis 
lateral lateral bearing. Yeah.